Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Liu, welcome back to my channel. This week astronomers announced the finding of the farthest star to ever be seen. They call her Erendelle. In this week's video we're going to break down just what that means, so let's begin. Erendel is a redshift 6 star. Recall that redshift is equivalent to distance, where a higher redshift is farther away. It's so far away that the light took 12.9 billion years just to reach us. Now our universe is believed to be just 13.7 billion years old, so this star is really a star from the early universe, born not long after the Big Bang. Given that a star like our Sun has an average lifespan of about 10 billion years, Erendel might not even be there anymore. Even if it is, remember that the universe is expanding, so the star would have moved a lot farther out from where it was when it emitted that light we're currently seeing. The star is now 24 billion light years away. So like I said, Erendel is at a redshift of 6, but this isn't the farthest away thing that we've ever seen. The farthest galaxy observed is at a redshift of 11, that's equivalent to a distance of 32 billion light years away currently. However, this is potentially the farthest away resolved star to have been observed, and that's pretty impressive because it's not even that bright. Supernova explosions, the death performance of a star, are easily some of the brightest phenomena in our universe, yet supernova have only been observed out to a redshift of 4. So how is it that we're able to see the star? Just like the previous record holder of the title farthest observed star, Icarus, Erendel had help from a gravitational lens. So a gravitational lens is a region of high mass, in this case a massive cluster of galaxies who collectively, along with their big halo of gas and dark matter, have enough gravity to bend and magnify the light of any astronomical object behind it. It acts like a giant magnifying glass, it concentrates light in a way to amplify it. But gravitational lensing alone is not enough to allow us to see Erendel. Typically, a galaxy cluster will be able to produce a magnification of order 5 to 10 for stars and galaxies at redshifts between 6 and 10. Erendel, however, has been estimated to have between 5,000 and 20,000 times magnification. So the reason being is that Erendel happens to lie in, or at least very close to, a region of space that we call a caustic. The caustic is a projection of special lines at the gravitational lens called critical lines, and these are inherent to the gravitational potential of the lens system. Different shaped lenses will have different gravitational potentials and hence will create different critical lines. But it's along these special lines where magnification is infinity. And when a star crosses the caustic, its image or projection crosses the critical line and its magnification becomes infinite. It's these lines that also cause the giant arcs in the infamous gravitational lensing images and in certain configurations will also cause Einstein rings. Therefore it's extremely rare that such an alignment of us, a galaxy cluster and a star were to happen and allow us to see this beautiful Erendel star. Thankfully though, because Erendel is so far away it's unlikely that it will move out of that configuration anytime soon. In fact, this star can be seen in observations going back 3.5 years and it hasn't dimmed one bit. Erendel will be observed with the James Webb Space Telescope that was launched back in December. The telescope is still being prepared for observations, but we expect to have the first observations in June or so. James Webb is Hubble Space Telescope's successor, offering higher resolution images and spectra. This means that James Webb will be able to tell us if Erendel is really an individual star, or instead maybe it's a binary or even star cluster. 
The spectra will be able to tell us more about what the star is made of. We already know that the star is 50 times bigger than our sun. So what else could be different between the stars in our local galaxy today and those from the early universe like Arendelle? That's another one for astronomers to find out. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.